shape of you, you're going to hell And that's a promise Over and over and over and over again Over and over and over and over again Hi, I'm Simon. I'm sitting here with Caddy, but she's across an ocean. You are listening to Whoosh. Um, that was Pop Shop by Courting. Very, very, very hot off the hot off the press is that one. It is. We love the courting, the courting guys. <laughs> the courting. <laughs> the, the courting guys, the guys from courting. We it's do. our buddies. And uh, yeah. they've actually <clears throat> been in touch with us, which is super neat when uh, an artist we play keeps in touch with us. And um, they told us shortly after they were featured on Whoosh, they did an interview with the enemy. Oh, yeah. And uh, they told enemy that being on Whoosh 22 was a career highlight. Oh, so, wow. I know. So thank you guys from courting that's really how, cool it's super cool how are you this week Fair i'm pretty you? good i'm pretty good when I, i'm still recovering from birthday week which was two weeks ago can you believe that i, um, I can hardly still recovering um but then we've got time everything slowed down here because lockdown kicked in last thursday yeah um I mean, everybody's just getting used to it and finding their level. Um, we had fireworks on Saturday. Oh, and was it little, Guy Fawkes and Day? The, you no, know, Guy yeah. Fawkes Day was Thursday, but we saved it for the weekend because we could we could have we could have more fun. We could have more fun. We're Sorry. not allowed to have more. We're not allowed to have more people at the house. That's for sure. Let me ask you this. As one of your children is a uh, student, does that mean she can't go to school right now because of lockdown? Um, no, she does go to school because schools aren't closed. Oh, so it's a moderate lockdown. It's not like you can't. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. That's cool. Um. I'm trying to think about this week and it's goes so quickly now it looks like we're heading into uh at least american thanksgiving pretty quickly and they've um oh we didn't mention the politics we didn't mention the fact we that, didn't, that, that, that the united that, states that, has a new president that president trump doesn't really want to believe the results he doesn't but we shouldn't disenfranchise our Donald Trump supporters on Whoosh. I, I, I totally I, agree with that. I, totally I leave agree. that for my Twitter, mm, but I behave yeah. on a podcast. And uh, all I feel is that America should become America again. And however or whatever yeah. it takes for mm. it to do that, I'm all for. Do you mean that you, you want somebody who will unify the country rather than somebody who will divide it? That or is exactly. Who will, you know, we'll start a civil war. And, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah so, well, I, so I here's to, to, the to that. Yeah, here's to the future. Anyway, so I was going to say we're coming up on American Thanksgiving pretty quickly. I wondered, have you ever been to an American Thanksgiving dinner in all your years touring the USA? I have. <gasps> Do tell. Oh, I can't remember. I know I've oh. been to one. I think it was in. I, I I I think I went. Oh gosh, I know I've been to one. Where was it? I think I went to one in, in um, Austin, Texas. Was it at someone's house? Yes, I've definitely been to them in, in hotels, but that's not the same, is it? No, you got to go to somebody's no. house. You bet. Hmm, that's interesting. It's one of my favorite holidays. American yeah, holiday, a lovely one. Yeah, I agree. It is. Do you have anything equal to that in the UK? What, between now and Christmas, yeah, like a family dinner thing. No, we have family dinners every week. You do. You have Sunday dinner, we have, right? We have Sunday lunch, which is pretty much a Sunday lunch or a dinner. Yeah, we we always call it Sunday lunch, even if we serve it at seven o'clock in the evening. That's um, so cute. But we have. I mean, it's, it's a big part of our. 
kind of new life under. It's something that's really kind of that, that, that really has grown up out of lockdown. But it's it feels like if you miss Sunday lunch, you you ought to have a really good reason, you know. Yeah. So most people like you're away. You're going to see, you're going to do something. Yeah, you can't so just skip it. Can't just, nobody skips it because it's too. Yeah. Everybody really loves it, and it's that chance for everybody to connect with each other that is so important. That's so sweet. We don't do mm -hmm. that here. Do you cook, or does Yazzie cook, or do you take turns? We do. We both do. We both do. We take turns, and we both cook. So you know what? I, I before we jump into the next song, I just wondered during lockdown if you've discovered any new uh shows to binge because i'm looking yes let me hear yes it. oh god yeah it's a brilliant brilliant one my one jewel um it's starring one of my favorite actresses which is anya anya taylor joy um it's a thing called the queen's gambit it's on Netflix. i heard it's, ama it's it like amazing it's amazing i mean I, oh, i'm, I'm okay. watching it now. I'll be truthful. I read the book years ago. It's a Stephen King non de plume, right? Is that the is right that word? Is? Is that he it wrote is? it under one of his non de plumes. Oh, why? I didn't know. I didn't know that. I just read it and I loved the story. I just thought it was such a great story. Um, it's not a very thick book. It's quite a thin book. And they've been very, very true to the spirit of the novel in, in, the, um, in, in the way that they've rendered it for TV. Um, and they spent time because, you know, you could have made that book into a film, I promise you. But the way they've done it with, with I, I, I don't know, I'm on, I've just, just finished episode three. Um, I, I guess it goes to episode four, maybe five, maybe six. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured out yet. I haven't looked. I didn't look to see how many. Okay, um, I hear it's very <clears throat> terrific. No, but do watch it. It's fabulous, and it, there's 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 nothing else that I'm crazy about. I started watching a teacher about yeah, a I... teacher's affair with a student. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a, right. it's salacious. So in that sense, it's yeah. Good. I'm, yeah, I, I know. It is. I, what was, it I is. started watching um, this thing called Revolution. Le, the, the revolution or le revolution and it's french and it's sort of but it's weird <laughs> yes i know you know <laughs> um but it's funny because it's it's sort of it's, it's all about the aristocrats and they sort of become these kind of vampire things but they're not really vampires what happens is their blood turns blue they don't have a problem with crosses or garlic or anything like that so they're not proper vampires <laughs> they do kill people though um but yeah it and 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 it's all to do with the, the peasants kind of um, the peasants being very downtrodden and starving and everything. Do um, they kill them by sucking their blood? No, they bite big chunks out of them and the people just bleed to death. Oh, okay. So they, don't, they don't suck their blood. They just, they just have a taste for human flesh. Mm. Okay. It's, it's, I don't, I don't, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's a compulsion either. It's just disease that turns your blood blue. Oh, right. And, and right. it gives you sort of, it gives you sort of some kind of immunity to death. Mm. So it can bring the dead back to life. So it's almost like zombie, semi zombie, semi, and it, it's, it, and not, it's, it's got, it's got a fantastic cast and they're beautiful actors and actresses in it really good looking and and i mean and it's it's a period piece so it's it's all it's all costumes and set in set you know in the, in the what 1790s which is when the revolution happened and, and the other thing and the other thing i started watching was the old battlestar galactica <gasps> with richard hatch and dirk benedict and lauren green Lorne Green, yes. Lorne Green, is it? Yeah. The one the one with the you know, with, with Starbuck, the, 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 the crazy cigar smoking blonde female fighter pilot. Yeah. Yeah, that one. I remember and I, I sort of I kind of I because we have got this time on our hands, I quite I quite sort of getting into it, but it is quite slow moving. Oh, but it's also got that English actor who's in Four Weddings and not Four Weddings, who's in um, Bridget Jones, isn't it? The English guy. Who's the, there was um, a whole scientist. cast of English guys okay. in, in Bridget Jones. I will say better, Battlestar Galactica is very camp. Is it? A little bit. What, well, what, watching what? it now, those outfits and the and the and the uh what is it? The special effects are not very special. 
What are you doing? Well, are you untangling your right. bits? <laughs> my bitch is <laughs> my bitch is tangled up around my uh, my wrists. Okay, can we move on? Can we play some music, please? Let's this hear is some music, man. Okay. Go, dude, go. All right, you want to hear next? something good? Okay, well, this is a this is a pretty new English band. They're called Sunken. Um, it, the, the song is Visions of You. It just I I was a huge fan of the Cocteau Twins. Mm. I still am. And this really reminds me of them. I think she has a fantastic voice. And I really, I'm really, i thinking of trying to get in contact to see if she could do some BVs on a Duran track. Um, <clears throat> but I don't you know, know what her name it. is? Poppy Billingham. And you Poppy. know who's in, Poppy, you know who's in the band with her? Her brother Who? Finn. Her brother All Finn right. Billingham. So well, it's a bro, got, bro sis thing. Yeah, well, I, I love the way she sings. It's it's so pure and floated. She has a floated vocal. She it's does. very relaxed and very, very, very relaxing. Visions of You by Sunken here on Whoosh. And I'm not waving high Guess I'm never ending You could call me pie But really how long till the world realize 
Yes, yes, I'm the best. Fuck what you heard. Anything less just obviously absurd. It is get the bird, more like an eagle. This is my movie. Stay tuned for the sequel. Seems so wrong, seems so illegal. Got this in the back like a foul ball free throw. Yep, yep, you know that I go. This is me on the regular, so you know. This is me on the regular, so you know. Yep, yep, you know that I go. This is me on the regular, so you know. This is me on the regular, so you know. I come with the tip, with the blow, with the boom. And if you're in my way, there's nothing but doom. Ain't got no time for your wretched ass goons. And just settle down, listen to my tunes. Ever since I was eight, I was attached to the mic. Wanted a guitar before I wanted a bite. Had an apple phone, talking fish or price. Never seen a song, cause I'm up all night. Really, really? Really, really? You wanna talk shit, but you know that I am really, really to the fullest. You can call me cancer, no more the choice, cause I'm the only answer. Ain't got no wallet, only use your advance. You know my trick is ready, cause there's a nigga dance. You wanna get at me, but you don't stand a chance. And if you wanna fuck up, yes, you can kick your hands. Hey, just get the bird, more like an eagle. This is my movie, stay tuned for the sequel. Seems so wrong, seems so illegal. Got this in the back like a foul ball free throw. Yep, yep, you know that I go. This is me on the regular, so you know. Am I bringing us in? You Hi. are. I am. Look how cute you are today. Everyone, that was Shamir. Shamir with On the Regular, which I love. That track actually yeah. came out in 2014, which meant he would have possibly performed it when he toured with Duran Duran on part of the yeah. Paper Gods tour. Yes. So that's I, super I, fun. Um. We had uh, Shamir on the road with us for the Paper Gods tour. I think he was quite near the beginning of the tour. Um, and he really brought something quite special, quite unique to the show, I'd say. Um, he has a very, he has an androgynous sort of, um, he's sort of almost like above sexuality. Hmm. Or may, or maybe that's the wrong thing. Maybe you wouldn't know, but he seems to be, he seems to be independent. He, he's like an independent, yeah. um, which is really interesting. Um, he's 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 charming. He's funny, um, and he has a very. He's, he's got a great sort of rapport with the audience. I thought he really gets on well with the crowd, which is mm. always a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. So, and do, does this song remind you a little bit of a track we played by Carlo called Fake ID? It, well, it does. Once you brought it up, it sounds a lot like they could be paired together on a playlist quite easily. Maybe making our Christmas uh, playlist. Well, I, I've been, by the way, talking about the Christmas playlist. We're not going to be able to do it in, in, in 20 songs, which is not. It's going to be more like 60. I Can we do it over I, two I, episodes? Yes, that's exactly that's what, what I'm we thinking. should do. We'll, yeah. do two long, we'll do two long episodes. Okay. Right? I've had because we might take a Christmas break. We should prepare. Definitely, we'll we'll just do. We'll just record. We'll just record enough to cover our bottoms, our butts. Tushies. I put a tushies. A tushy. Do you use the word tushy? No, I do not. I do in my house. I said it it because I knew you'd know what I was talking about. I do. We use the word. We use the word arse or bum. Right? You use bum a lot. Bum. Bum. Kick me out the bum. 
I used Tukus. It's Tukus. 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 And when Tanner was little, he couldn't, I don't know, he didn't say Tukus. He said Tukulus, which is uh, funnier. I have a question. <laughs> so we stopped talking about Tukuluses and let's talk yeah. about a question. Yeah. This is a good question and it's long. So I'm going to read the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Hi, Simon and Caddy. I love the balance of the show, spanning both Duran Duran history to learning about new artists and their background. Caddy, I have a question for you. She also has one for you, Simon. Mm -hmm. I used to work in advertising research and would promote Duran Duran in the 90s when I worked in Hartford, Connecticut. Do you plan to use your research skills and compile a Duran Duran history book to coincide? With each new album release, or perhaps write liner notes, a good book idea would be about detailing each song, including unreleased, to show the depth of the Duran catalog to also coincide with the next Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations. Wow. Susan, okay. that's can from I, Susan. Can I, can I be honest? Do you wanna, I don't really understand the question. I do. And then she has one for you, too. But let me just answer oh, that's for mine. you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I that's for me. Okay, yeah. I appreciate that you take notes, Susan, of my research skills on each episode of Whoosh, but they're pretty yeah. small, right? It takes me, when Simon gives me the playlist, it takes me about an hour and a half, mostly because I'm a Virgo, and I have to listen to the song, then watch the video, then do my research, then look up everybody's social media accounts. So it's like it's a little intense. I would not do that for Duran Duran because I don't think I have those skills for a band with the history of Duran Duran. I think mm -hmm. that I know them personally, but my research skills are fairly limited. But thank you for thinking of me. N now, her Susan's question for you, Simon, is your first show in the U.S. was at a former club in Long Island called Spit. Spit it's Long a, Island. Spit Hapo Long Island. Hapoji. Hapoji. You always say Hapoji. It's Hapoj. Hapog. It's Hapog, actually. Hapog. When you're... I remember. I can remember hearing commercials for Spit on WLIR. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah. A, it was a very big. They, the Spit was like a sort of. They were part of some kind of franchise, I think, because the, there was a. There's a place in Boston called the Nitro, or was it the Detroit uh, Nitro? Uh, and there's another one called the something else, and they all had these kind of punky sort of names, and they all had the same kind of. They all had those big video screens up, you know, the, the, the oh, Rock, yeah, America, yeah. Rock America video screens, which was like the video jukeboxes, really. Um, oh. Anyway, what was the, yeah, I, I remember that show very, very, very well. I didn't go to any of those clubs. I was nerd. I think I was nerdy. Anyway, Susan says, when you tour next year in the U.S., would you consider smaller clubs or smaller markets to get that club vibe feeling, like you said last week, with Night Boat and the Dry Ice Swedish coat. coat. For example, Connecticut can get passed through between New York and Boston, and you're always welcome here in our town for a warm-up. Yeah. Nile is nearby, um, too. Yeah. But you know what, Simon? Do you remember during the Red Carpet Massacre warm-up shows, you did them in Connecticut? Remember that? Yeah, I do. I do remember there that. There were a yes, bunch. It was over your theater. birthday, too. It was a theater, wasn't it? I can't remember, but I know we went out it to was, dinner for your birthday. Then, and then we went, and then we had, um, and the, yeah, I do remember that. And then we had the whole, because we we wanted to be in a velvet, a proper theater to just give us the right vibe for um, for the Broadway shows. Right. Um, yes. Uh, well, you know, I, I've stopped, long stopped thinking that my opinion has any kind of sway in matters of sort of, um, you know, rooting, <laughs> uh, venue, venue, choice of venue, things like that. I just leave it up to the guys who look after us because they they do their professionals. And once you start getting involved, you're kind of slightly questioning their professionality. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd love to do that. It's also a question of, you know, how how much money it's going to cost you. Will it cost you more to do those shows than, than you're going to earn? That's the problem. Yeah, fans so don't really you, understand as that. You, as you get bigger, as your band gets bigger and bigger and bigger, your crew gets bigger and bigger, and you have to take more people on the road with you. Um, and if you play places that don't give you the right kind of remuneration, um, then you will be losing money. 
and that's not good. And we, we've always we've always made a very big point of not losing money on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'd have to work out different. If we wanted to play that sort of thing, we'd have to come up with a different kind of tour to do it. You couldn't really have that tour running alongside a big show tour. You'd have to do one or the other. Uh, that's a good point that you've illuminated for our listeners because I think people don't realize how – you guys have um, employees Mm. and you can't not have some of them on small shows. You got to bring the whole lot. So it's, it's a thing. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. So, you know, what we didn't discuss at the beginning of the show that this is our 30th episode. 30th episode. Woo! That's a lot of episodes. I just, to me, they're just numbers, but do you know what? We've got a great title for episode number 30. Um, this is Whoosh 30, and the title is With Yesterday's Makeup Still On. You know, I Googled the title because I couldn't figure it out, and then I kept getting Be- No, I kept getting a Beatles song. Really? Yeah. Yesterday. Probably, yeah, because of that. And yeah, then well, I, was, I Would you like me to point it out for you? I would love – uh, yes, that would be divine of you. It, it is It is in the, it is in the list, um, and it's a little bit later on. So it's sort of – it's slap bang in the middle, actually, which gives you a big clue. Um, uh-huh. Okay, shall we it's play in music? in the hot spot. Let's play some music. <laughs> Let's listen to When Will I Hold You Again by Dion – Luna Don featuring Kate Glover. And right. in an in an interview, the Brooklyn-based Dion said that this is for and for and about all the people around the world that can't be with the ones they love. For Aww. the people that live by themselves, and most of all for the people of New York. Aww. So this COVID-inspired track That's- is When Will I Hold You Again? Yeah, it's proper rock and roll, this one.
lose it all in the morning Suddenly the sun makes it all feel alarming Breaking up our routine, this new thing is daunting Rest my head on you, it's a border I'm crossing Just another drop, fill me up till I'm holy Heaven only knows what we do when we're lonely Break the bread and watch as the seas come Waiting for, and it was um, a track by Rum Gold featuring Jamila Woods. By the way, that is Rum Dot Gold. Yes, Rum and Rum, I have Rum, an, Rum Gold. Yeah, I have an interesting story about Rum Dot Gold. First of all, Jamila was on Wish Twenty Two with the track. I know. Yeah, she's. I think she's been on a few actually. I think she's this is a great, her third. She's a fantastic singer, fantastic singer. I'm not sure. Not surprised that everybody wants to use her. Wants to do vocals with her. I would want to do vocals with her as well, to be honest. Mm. Uh, she's it, really good. Um, Jamila, you hear that? So Rum Gold, <laughs> Rum Gold is from the D.C. area, and he started to upload songs anonymously when uh, he was in music school in Boston. He said he didn't have loads of confidence. Uh, then he did. You know, he found uh, someone found him on SoundCloud, a producer that lives in lived in Berlin who he has still never met, which I find fascinating. And they started working together. And now he lives in Brooklyn, New York, and he's putting out music. His last name is Drumgold, D-R-U-M-G-O-L-D. Oh, and he took the D off yeah. because he didn't play drums. He didn't want to confuse anyone. But mm. I thought that was such a – I can't find his first name, though, and I did I did look. Um but I really love that song. I love the vibe. Yeah, really, I, yeah. I love how it made it, me feel. Yeah, it's very warm. It's like the summer mm -hmm. time, summer's kind of water just steps in through the window for the length of the song. Mm. Um, while we were while we were playing those two tracks, I was explaining to we were talking about the um 
the Dion Lunadon track. Um, yeah. When when will I hold you again? And I was explaining to Caddy that this is this is a pretty standard twelve bar, what's called a twelve bar blues chord sequence. It's called twelve bars because it actually can be broken down into twelve bars. You have so many bars on the on the on on the tonic, and then you move up to the dominant. Oh, this is so. This is technical stuff. But this anyway, is so if, cool. if you think, but if you think about a track like you know. What's that rock and roll by um, by Led Zeppelin? Yeah, been a long, been a long time, time. It's the rock and, rock and roll. roll. It's the same. It's musically, it's exactly the same shape as um, when will I hold you again? And the reason I chose it to play was because I, I, it was only after a while that I realised it was that 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 chord shape, that 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 um, that pattern that chord pattern and i and, and and usually we try to stay away from those things because they're so standard and they're so, so they, they seem kind of hackneyed and, and and a very well trodden road but this kind of i like the way he did this it had a different slightly different kind of sound to it and i i actually like the sound of the record mm. the sound of his voice the guitars and everything anyway that was my little bit as you said it's like a prop it's a proper rocker right that's what yeah. you said and we all learned mm. something new because I didn't know anything about 12 bars sequences. Mm -hmm. We have a question. Should we, should we, uh, should we take it? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Go ahead. Let's take it. It's from a, uh, a listener in Israel. I'm assuming you're from Israel or Kurt because the question is caddy. Have you ever been to Israel? And Simon, what is your most fond memory from your time in Israel? So no, I have never been. I would like to go. I was meant to go with my dad and we never did go. And that's sad to me. And I, I, someday I'll go. I imagine I was too, I'm too old to have done the birthright trip, which uh, for those of you who may or may not know in America, what, if you're a Jewish person, when you're 18, you're entitled to take a free or all expense paid birthright trip to Israel or sort of all expense paid trip. So maybe my children will get to go, but I have not gone. You, you, what was your experience, Mr. Well, my, my experience. Well, I had, a, I went and it's what I did. What a lot of, um, what a lot of penniless, um, Brits used to do in the 1970s. I got a job on a kibbutz, which took me into the sunshine for some months actually. And I got, I didn't get paid, but I got, it, I didn't pay anything for my, for my accommodation. All I paid for was my uh, travel to and from. <clears throat> so I got my, all my all my accommodation was covered and my um, food was my yeah I was fed as well. So that really um, that's the main reason I did that. Did um, you um, did you go with a friend or it's just yeah, something? I went, I went I went with a girlfriend, oh. an important an important girlfriend. Um, but we kind of split up when I sort of started hanging out with the, the Israeli soldier girls. It's a whole, this is a whole big story. One day I'll make it into a movie. Really? My wow. European. So you went, it was your gap year? <clears throat> well, sort of. I was in between um, A-level retakes and I did it before I went to university. And my mum, I mean, I had an amazing time. I fell out of love. I fell in love. I did all sorts of stuff. We, um, I wrote the chauffeur. I started, I wrote, started writing the chauffeur there. Um, and came, my mum, I didn't want to come back. I just want to stay there. I got a job. I was driving tractors. I was doing irrigation in the fields. I did all kinds of tree surgery and stuff like that. I know how to graft uh, root stock onto fruit bearing stock. Would you believe? I'd believe anything when it came you, to you. <laughs> yeah, and it, I, they taught me a lot of stuff, and I still remember it now. Um, but the thing is, uh, it was just not forever. And my mum called up. She got me on the one day. They said, somebody on the phone for you. Nobody ever called the kibbutz and asked for the volunteers. But I went and this, I went along to the office, and um, and she said, um, she said, Simon, you've got into university. You passed your A levels, and you're in. You're gonna, you're gonna have to come back home. I went, hmm. oh. Really, I thought. I thought. No, I don't really want to come home. But then, you know, I did, and then 
in and how funny how life takes these court you know the choices you make really influences what happens in the rest of your life mm. you know if i'd have stayed there then i would have i would have stayed i stayed on kibbutz i wouldn't have gone to university i wouldn't have met duran duran you know it really changed it really but that but that going to kibbutz and being in israel was a really important part of it i had amazing times there we went down to the um the Negev, the, in, out of the Negev desert, into the into Sinai. This was before Israel had given Sinai back to Egypt. You know, um, went went swimming in the Red Sea, got frightened by a massive shark, oh all stuff God. like. I had an amazing, an amazing time, and I'm not joking. It, I could make it into a film. It was so exciting. And then you went back in the '90s with Duran Duran, and you played yes. a couple of shows during the wedding album yeah. tour. And I and I actually went and revisited my um, my old kibbutz. Wow, and they, that's they pretty were the, neat. It was fantastic. Yep, it was oh, really neat. Hmm. You know, do you know Bob Dylan went to, to kibbutz as well? I think I did know that actually because yeah. I. Uh, I live with a big Bob Dylan fan. Right. Um, I'm going to ask you so another I just, question. I, I'm just oh, going to go ahead. back quickly because I've, yeah. I've just figured out that the um, that the, the the twelve bar blues sequence is tonic to subdominant to tonic to dominant to tonic, and that pattern Two. is repeated. That's repeated for everyone taking notes. Did yeah. you figure that out in your head? No, I I got I Googled got a page. It? I got Wikipedia open actually. Oh. Very good. But in, in, in funny enough, though, but in in the French system, they call they 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 talk about um, do re mi fa so la ti do, and that could be in any any anything. So tonic is do, supertonic re, um, do re mi mi is median, and so on and so on. This is actually quite boring when I do this, isn't it? Sorry. No, your mu <clears throat> our music listeners love it. Here's okay. a question from. Anna Bronco from Portugal. Mm -hmm. um, Anna I says, think I, I know Anna. Oh, I okay. I, I Anna, Anna, Anna then. Are. She loves the Paper Gods album and her favorite song is Sunset Garage. Oh, she right. loves the me melody and the way you sing it. And um, she's sure it's a great song to do live. Did you ever do that song? Live? I don't think we ever did that live. I don't I'd love think to. so it's, my, it's, my, it's one of my favorite tracks on the album too. Me too. So. I gotta tell you, it really is. It's great. She wants to hear. Wants to learn more about how you guys got that song together. Tell okay. Us. Well, all oh, right. So we were we were out. It's one of the ones when I went out of the studio, and John and um, Nick and um, Mr. Hudson, Ben Hudson, oh, yeah. got together. Got together, and they came up with it. And I think it was really that reggae bass line. Doom, do 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 and it really reminded me of um is this love is this love is this love when we when i came back in the next day oh yeah right it had a very vibe it had a real it had a real marley vibe to it and i thought this is just this is this is such a gift um and and it just and it just started. It, it kind of wrote itself from from there on, really. You know, back in the well, room. Here we are again. Back in the room. I love that song, and I know you're you're working on new music, which everybody listening is eagerly anticipating. Mm -hmm. Do we have any scoop? Any scoop? No, you no. know me. I'm I'm I'm, know. Mr. I'm Mr. Scoopless. You are. I'm Mr. Scoopless. I'm Mr. Stum. That's a good one, right? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. After, you. Are you after my job? No. What is uh? What? Tell me about the number. So we Simon and I refer to number uh six. The track six. number six is the hot spot. That yeah, is the hot spot because it's that the one that we that we the talk track. by the side of. Yeah. Yeah. So what can you <clears> tell <throat> me about ah uh, ah uh, ah? Uh, and how did you find it? It oh. is. God, I, I don't know what I was. I, I can't remember quite how I came across it. Um, it's ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. It's by a band called Pint and We Fall, which is which means I think that means she gets drunk really easily, or she or they get drunk. They get drunk really easily. Um, and and they're I think are they Icelandic from Iceland or are they from where are they from Caddy? Helsinki. Helsinki. Finland. Yeah. 
Finland. I had to Google it. Finland. I had to Google where Helsinki okay, was. So I think I would say that close to played, Russia. So you asked me how I got to this. I was yeah, it was probably I was going a, down. I think I was going down the rabbit hole of of, um, of Finnish bands and artists. That must be. Um, it. And this one is really quite special. Um, I think we should play it, and you make your own mind up. I think it's it's absolutely wonderful. If you listen closely, you might hear the title of the episode in there. Um, but anyway, this is this is proper class. This is R R R from Pint and We Fall. It's like so music. Beautiful. It's like music. Music by the fairies, really. Yes, that is so beautiful. So, mm, what's quite... funny about this band is they only perform with Zorro masks on, sort of oh, like right. those Mexican uh, wrestler guys. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, I know. And they have not... names. Their names are Crazy Pint, Cute yeah. Pint, Dumb Pint, and Tough Pint. All right. So, okay. So this, the they're gorgeous right. singing doesn't really go with their name, but it doesn't matter because no? you know what? It's okay to pretend you're badass, but you can yeah. still you can still. And a lot of people do. I do. I pretend I sometimes pretend I'm a badass, but really I'm a nice boy. I think you're uh, not badass at all, and I don't even think you pretend exactly. to be badass. You know, I uh, I really like that song. I it's a current song, but they've been together for 14 years. Yeah, I wonder they should come open for Duran Duran. Don't you I think? think that, maybe, maybe. I just that there it's that song is just that's almost my song of the of the winter already. <clears throat> Cuz it sounds like it's snowing. I wonder you know? if I have my song of the week yet did i choose my so i don't know if i did choose my song of the week that could be up there this week is this this week it's very tough it is they're all pretty fantastical 
I have a question from Elizabeth. Okay, good. Uh, Elizabeth came across a recent video of Duran Duran's photo shoot with Dean Chamberlain and was oh, fascinated wow. by the process. Yeah. I love his photography and wondered if Simon had any memories of the photo shoots of working with Dean or the videos, maybe Arcadia. <laughs> And then she kindly asks me what my favorite Chamberlain piece of Duran Duran photography is. And she thanks us for the music and the fun we bring every week. You always make me laugh. And of course, thank you in advance for the answers. So you go first because you're the guy. Um, who's worked well, with him. I, we worked with Dean Chamberlain on lots and lots of things. <clears throat> you know, he did, he did things. Um, I mean, we started off, it was the Arcadia. That's when I first met him in Paris when we were doing Arcadia. Um, and he did, he did the, the, he did a lot of the cover and, and promo shots for that. He didn't do the cover. What am I talking about? He just did a lot of, he did some, some promo shots for us. That's the first thing he did. And, um, I was amazed by his style of just, of, basically putting you in a darkened room, opening the camera lens, having you stand still, and then lighting you with a torch. Um, so he did that. He was a big part of um, of that whole project, I think. Um, <clears throat> now, then after that, he, he did different stuff for us. He did, um, he did uh, let me see now. Well, he did the um, video for All She Wants Is. Oh, wow. And he did a video for a song called Missing, which was on the, um, which was on the, <clears throat> the uh, Arcadia album. But All She Wants Is was on Big Thing. Mm -hmm. um, he takes, he too, took ages to do things, really <laughs> a long time. <laughs> Um, just because it was one one frame at a time, you, you would make a whole video one frame at a time. Extraordinary, mm. and a perfectionist. You know, yes. I always love that song "Missing" by Arcadia. Someone should ask mm. a question about it because I want to mm. know about that song. So, just hint, hint. Okay. Yes. If you have a question for Wush, you should send it to Wush Radio W H O O O S H Radio at gmail dot com. That's what I have to say. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite piece of Dean Chamberlain art because I, you know, people think that I know so much, but I don't know so much about so many specific things. But did he do a thank you photo shoot, Dean? Or no? Because if he did, I'm there's trying, a photo. I'm trying, what, what's the photo? Did you say there is the a four heads laying down, and I think you have like rose petals over your face. Oh no, that that looks like I think that reminds you of him because of so red the rose and all the rose petals. Oh, but maybe that, that shot was actually I if I correct me, I mean somebody Nick would correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that was an Ellen Van Unworth shot. Oh, maybe. Okay, yeah, so really see, I was, don't have yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I don't have a favorite, but I do like the the uh, video for all she wants is. So let's yeah. just say it, let's say it's that. Cool. We have another question from a listener in Hungary. Hungary, mm -hmm. like the wolf. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a fake laugh. Thank you so much for your weekly program. Having spent the last two weeks in bed because I tested positive. For the coronavirus. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. I have watched some of your live shows on YouTube. Each of them is great. My question concerns the shows. How long does it take you to put a show together? How much time do you spend with rehearsals? One can see that it's a lot of work in these live performances. Thank you. I wish you the best, Laura. So first, we have to say, Laura, we hope you are feeling yeah. better. Yeah, absolutely. For certain. And then, Simon, how long does it take to mount a Duran Duran tour? Okay, give me a chance to think. Let me think. Okay. Do, 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 do. This is my tribute to Alex Trebek, everyone. Do, do, okay, I'm ready. Well done. Well done. I thought you'd be telling jokes while I was thinking. No, um, I was doing my tribute I... to Alex. <laughs> so, um... It's a. It's. I think we start thinking. We start thinking about the show when we're making. When we start getting towards the end of the album, 
that's when that's when people because you're because some people just are always thinking about the next thing, aren't they? And that that's John. John, mm-hmm. he he's always thinking about the next thing. Um, and it's good to have somebody who's like that as well. So he starts to do things. We all sort of we we all mentally making notes of songs that we think ought to be in the show, and we really do base the show around the repertoire. Um, and me- obviously, the new album is a big part, is a huge part of that as well. So yeah, that's I would say that's a, that that's one of the crucial aspects of it all is the um, you know the new songs that we're going to be playing. Um, now and then when we've decided that then we um then we just start learning the the music but we're also working with the show designer as well which is basically the person who's going to be doing the set and the lighting uh which is usually vince Mm -hmm. vince Vince foster that's right that's right that's right vince foster he's lovely and he's also a set designer so that thing gets all done together um and then we well then we rehearse and rehearse and then somebody finally builds the set in a in a a rehearsal room and we start playing it with the lights and the show and it's it's very exciting it's very very exciting part of what we're doing let's have some music let's have music let's do it what do we got what do we got we got, we got a new English band, I think. Are they English? They Blank, are Blanket from Man. Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, so this is Blanket Man. They're a Manchester band. I think this is this is quite a new track by them. I don't know if they've had much else put out before, but I love it. It's called Beach Body. It's um it's kind of it's kind of new English punk. <laughs>
Well, that's kind of put me in a very kind of mellow place, mellow, melancholy place, a bit sad, really, um, which is, I wasn't meant to, but it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Oh, it's my a, gosh. So gorgeous. Her, it's an artist whose name is Lucy Rose, and that track is Question It All. I it's so dreamy and takes me into a place, but it's kind of got me in, in my little sad spot that time. <clears throat> yeah. I, you know, I love what a gorgeous voice. And like you said, it sort of transported me like a sad lullaby. I kind of just want to curl up now and, <laughs> and yeah. watch something. I mean, it's, it's, got some, it's definitely remind. It's got some things that remind me of music that I love already. That kind of jazzy, fretless bass thing as well. Uh, that that it it has a vibe from. If anybody's familiar with the Joni Mitchell album, the Hissing of Summer Lawns, it could it could have been on that album. Oh, and so, and 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 even though she doesn't have the, she doesn't sing in the same register as Joni. Um, there's something about the way she uses her voice, which is quite Joni Mitchell-esque, I think. Um, it's it's beautiful. It is. She's an English, Lucy's an English singer-songwriter. I'm going to have, have a little sob. Oh, you're too cute. Stop it with you. Um, well, you have a little uh, sob. I'm going to say her debut album, Like I Used To, was released in 2012. She released her second album, Work It Out, in 2015, and her third album, Something's Changing, in 2017. And um, I really thought that the video was sweet, too. She had her fans send in a little video clip of things that made them happy during COVID, cool. and she put it all together. Um, and then going back to sort of a more perhaps more frivolous song, Beach Body. This, uh, for, for Beach Body, I wrote, this is a very Simon song. The yeah. video is hilarious, so you should go, uh, you should find the video if you can. Um, you'll never look at an ice cream cone in the same way again. But I did want to say that there, uh, I thought it was interesting that Blanket Man's, their name came from the blanket protest that happened during the Irish Troubles when political prisoners refused to wear prison uniforms oh. and wrap themselves in blankets, I earning the nickname Blanket Man. So it was that's such a serious name, and the song seems sort of uh, silly. And, and much like Simon said, the Manchester Evening News said that Blanket Man are breathing new life into 70s, 80s punk, yeah. post-punk. And you were... You were right about that. Um, you know, I have, uh, on top of sort of a melancholy song, I have some melancholy oh. news. Oh, no, please not. Yeah, yes, no. yes. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> you made me cry. I'm so <laughs> this, it's we're at the end of the show, which always uh, always makes me cry or makes me sad. And then uh, yeah. I just wait. As Simon can tell you on Monday from my many texts, I wait with bated breath for the next playlist. Yes, um, I know you do. I can made you wait too long for this one. Sorry, you did. I, 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 I didn't finish by by Friday evening. By the way, I just it's all right. It turned out what I thought was going to take up mm -hmm. a lot of time on my Tuesday didn't, so it's fine. Right. Uh, yeah. our, you know, we're going to leave you with uh, two tracks, which Simon can mostly tell you about. But the, I just want to say that our our track number nine by St. Mila is not safe for work. So if you listen to it, listen to it with headphones on, perhaps not even in front of your children because there's um, a lot of cuss words. But before, before we sign off, mm. Simon and I want to say hello and send a kiss to a listener named Shelly Roberts from Monmouth. Yes. Uh, your friend Kim left us a message, and we just want to say that we're thinking of you and yeah. we're sending you yeah. lots of love. Lots of love to you, Shelly. So tell us about our last song, Simon. Okay, well, last track. We've got, we've got, we've got the. Um, I'll tell you about the, the bonus track first. Well, it's an, the bonus track is um, another track by Rum Dot Gold. It's called Hazel Chandeliers. It's very elegant. I thought it was a nice way to, to go out. A very nice way. It's um, it's it's upbeat, but it's it's gentle and and elegant. I think that really is the right word for it. Before that, um, we are going to play Root. In, in in brackets and then less so you almost wonder whether it's the real title is less or the real title is root 
I think it's Rootless, personally, by Saint Mella. Yes, it has some naughty words in, but it is a very positive sounding piece of music. I love this. Um, um, for all of you who've been listening, I thank you so much for giving us your attention and your time. Um, I hope you tune in to hear the next episode. And until next week, I leave you with one word. And that word is whoosh. You had an honest clue? Would I lie to you? You keep your 30 silvers, cause bitch I know the truth. Who made it brew? They be stirring up these coups. When steam's wafting up, y'all need to let me through. And maybe I feel good and so I'm boasting. But they came to watch you get roasted. Everything is better when it's toasted. Crossing your frame like you lost it. Crying over whatever the cost is. You already knew. Martin showed your colors and we all see the hue. Standing all in stitches but nobody trying to sue. Fucking life, they come trying to loot us, lose us, but we deal with them.